got some pretty big details on the upcoming Intel GPUs. Asus has the worst April Fool's joke ever and RTX 4070. You want more details? Because we have them. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, and we're going to start off today talking about the next generation of Intel's graphics cards. We already talked in a previous episode last week about how we're expecting Intel's Battle Mage GPUs to potentially be up to double the performance of what the ARC A770 brings out to the table. But now newer details are coming out indicating that Intel is going full steam ahead on their plans to play orders for these GPUs, especially because of how many of you bought Intel's Arc Alchemist graphics cards. So can we just give everybody a round of applause for the whole reason that they're even going to be moving forward with all of these orders is because you went out, you bought the GPUs, despite the fact that they probably weren't ready in drivers, despite the fact that they weren't quite polished around the edges. You supported a brand new GPU company in the space and we're seeing success because of it. So that's essentially what's going on. Intel's planning. Battle Mage and Celeste Shield, their XE2 and XE3 architectures with TSMC orders on four nanometers and three nanometers for these graphics cards. We're expecting to get Battle Mage sometime next year in 2024. We're still gonna have to deal with Alchemist until then, and then Celestial coming sometime in 2026. So it does look like it's gonna be a slower rollout, but despite Raja Kadori leaving the company and despite all of the headaches and hiccups that we've had with the Arc Alchemist GPUs, it does look like Battle Mage and Celestial our full go ahead 225 watts hopefully double the performance of the a770 hopefully for the 300 dollars price point it simply looks like nvidia and amd have abandoned that what I, we used to call mid-range section of GPUs, now is kind of in the lower end section. They've just kind of given up on it, and it looks like Intel might be the best bet for an ongoing company to stably release in that price point. I'm excited for it. Are you excited for it? Let me know down below in the comments. Well, I'll let you know about today's video sponsor, Jawa. We've been talking about them, especially with all the upcoming GPU news. They are the place to go if you're looking to either buy, sell, or interact with about gaming PCs and gaming items, because they are the marketplace by gamers for gamers, where you can find full built out PCs that you're looking to buy, get it from their verified sellers, talk with it on their 8,000 plus person discord so that you have an idea of what you're buying. Or if you're looking to upgrade to the next generation of GPUs, you can actually sell your GPU directly to Jawa. You can go through the list, select which graphics card you have, whether it's a 1080 Ti, an R9 390, I found I could get them to buy it from me. You can find it on Jawa's website Well, they will pay you for your GPU. You can take that money and then go ahead and pick up a brand new graphics card for yourself or even just treat yourself to a nice little upgrade. Or if you have just a whole bunch of cards lying around the office like we do, isn't that right, Kyler? I'm tripping over. He's tripping over the GPUs. We could potentially relieve some of our clutter by heading on over to Jawa and getting an offer for our graphics card. Jawa is a marketplace that I think was desperately needed here in the United States. I love to see them thriving. I love to have them as a sponsor here on Hot News. So check them out either for a PC build that you're trying to buy, PC parts you're trying to sell, or even selling them your GPU directly. Check them out at the link in the video description. And you're gonna have to check out the ROG Ally because it turns out that it's a real product. Despite the fact that we covered it yesterday in our April Fool's part of Hot News, it turns out that Asus intended for this to be a real thing. Despite the fact that they released this at midnight on April 1st, this device is real. You wouldn't be the only person who thought it was fake because the head of product management at ROG posted on LinkedIn that this was an April Fool's joke, that ROG Ally stood for a lie, and that this was completely fake, only for them to come out later and say, not an April Fool's joke. This thing's 100% real. We're actually gonna be selling it. So before we get into the details of it, I understand probably why they marketed it like this. Instead of doing the Razor way, which is to come out with something ridiculous for April Fool's, and then if there's enough clamoring, you're like, fine, we'll release the Razor toaster. But Ace Jesus was like, Maybe we could get some product market research. We're planning on releasing this anyway, so let's get the opinions of everybody before we commit to a formal announcement. And if it's well received, then we launch it because that seems to be exactly what happened. Asus saying that this is indeed a very real handheld gaming competitor to the Steam Deck. It's going to be based on Windows. It's gonna have a Zen 4 CPU, RDNA 3 graphics. It's gonna be the fastest APU basically ever made. A semi-custom version from AMD themselves with full Xbox Game Pass 
support. It's gonna be an incredible machine based on specs alone. On top of that, you're gonna get a 500 nits, 1080p, 120 hertz refresh rate. You're gonna get one of the quietest handhelds out there. It comes in weighing less than the Steam Deck. It's essentially the AAA gaming version of the Steam Deck where Steam Deck likely will just remain for like indie titles and emulations and this will actually be able to take on a lot more. This is actually what I've been begging the Steam Deck to become. I want a Steam Deck Pro, something that's a higher end version of what we currently have and it looks like Asus is gonna be bringing that out. However, it was also announced that it supports their XG mobile connector which will allow you to take this external GPU which was made for several of their thin and light laptops like their flow you plug this in you get that gpu rtx 3080 currently out on the market for fifteen hundred dollars they've also announced that the 4090 will be coming for two thousand dollars but that's not a full desktop 4090 that's a mobile 4090 because nvidia won't let them put a full desktop card connected to their laptop so they have to sell the mobile version so it's going to be a really weird situation where you can get an external gpu for this but it's not going to be based on thunderbolt where you have this wide variety. It's going to be based on their proprietary dock, which is going to allow for eight PCI Express lanes as opposed to the four PCI Express lanes that Thunderbolt is roundabout supporting. So it will be faster to use this than the other way, but it's going to be proprietary and more locked down and honestly, probably not as good. The Aya Neo 2 already supports Thunderbolt 4. We have that over with Reese right now and he's currently testing GPU support on the Aya Neo 2. I prefer that as opposed to this, especially with how expensive all of this is gonna be. But again, Asus designing that this is gonna be a premium handheld. Now, likely this is not gonna be in the way of the Steam Deck in terms of being a budget item. The Steam Deck starting for 400 bucks, Asus ROG not known for being affordable. I can't expect that this would go for anything less than like a thousand twelve hundred bucks somewhere in that neighborhood just because of the asus price premium that comes with certain things and the specs that they're claiming seeing what else is on the market this is going to be very fast very good dave 2d and linus tech tips both getting to try out pre-production sample prototypes and it looks phenomenal it's the exact type of handheld i personally want a highly capable gaming machine as opposed to an emulation station it's just not going to be in the same ballpark of price competitiveness despite the fact that Asus says it's going to be price competitive, they don't mean with the Steam Deck. They mean for what they're giving you, which is a lot more than what Valve's offering. But in case you want to get notified when it goes on sale at Best Buy, we'll have a link in the video description to Best Buy where you can enter your email address and the ROG a lie will be available for you to purchase sometime sometime this year in 2023. Who knows? Let me know if you're interested in it down below in the comments. And I'm interested in Reese and the deals he brings us. Yo, welcome back to Ifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And you guys know I'm never gonna give you up these deals. Actually, yes I am, because here they are. First up, we have the Corsair IQ LC100 Smart Case Lighting Triangles for in case you ever wanted to put little nano leaves in your PC. At $130? No way, but $49.99? Maybe. But then another offering from Corsair is the HS60 Haptics. I grew up with haptic headphones. I kind of have like nostalgia for these. So, you know, maybe it's just me. I really like these. And you can currently pick them up for only $54.99 with the promo code bringing the total off to $75. And last but not least, we have this 32 gig kit of DDR5 from ADATA running at 5200 megahertz, which you can pick up for only $109.99, which is $160 off. I think it's pretty clean looking RAM. I'd put that in my system. And those are the deals for today. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks buddy, but you know what deal's not gonna make it into UFD deals? This Best Buy Western Digital Black Xbox expansion card. Yes, my friends, Seagate's monopolistic hold over expansion cards on the Xbox appears to be leaving because the WD Black C50 expansion card accidentally got listed over on Best Buy for $180 for a one terabyte stick, which is $40 less than what Seagate sells their one terabyte expansion for at $220 MSRP. It's currently on sale for $190. And even on that sale price, this WD Black will actually be cheaper than that. It has been pulled down by Best Buy because it likely wasn't ready for a full announcement, but it does look like there's gonna be more options in the expansion storage game when it comes to Xbox. This was necessary. It's a good looking design. I understand it. I still very much prefer Sony's way of allowing you to stick whatever M.2 NVMe SSD you want 
into your PlayStation. They have been better with that since the PlayStation 4, where you could swap out a hard drive, the PS3, you could do that. The Xbox has kind of been locked down. I don't like it, but having more competition hopefully will reduce the price and make it more affordable for the regular people, which is not what Apple's trying to do, but it turns out that might be the wrong strategy for them because according to reports, Apple had to cease production on the M2 chips for their Macs because they're not selling quite enough. Analysts are saying that the supply chain had to be ceased in February and January of this year with it being resumed in March, specifically citing lower demand for the M2 chips. And this is in line with what Apple said on their own Q1 earnings report saying that they were down roughly 30% from the previous quarter in terms of max sales. They're just not selling quite as many. And if it decreased even more in this latest quarter, then Apple's probably not in a very good place when it comes to their M2 chip lineup, especially after how revolutionary the M1 chip was, I think a lot of people upgraded to that generation. Not a whole lot of people left waiting to upgrade to the M2. It's likely gonna be the M3 that anybody's gonna upgrade to because they're gonna hold on those M1 devices for a little while. But let me know, does the M2 having slowed down production make sense to you at all? I wanna hear from you down below. And what doesn't make sense to a whole lot of people is the fact that Google Drive arbitrarily implemented a 5 million file limit to Google Drive users without telling them what's going on at all. It was a quietly introduced file creation limit, which again is 5 million files in your Google Drive, not a total of files shared with you. And this is despite whatever storage capacity you have. If you've only uploaded one terabyte, but it's 5 million files, you cannot use the rest of your storage. This is not affecting a ton of users. However, there are discussions that are taking place on places over like Reddit, where there's an individual who had 7 million files that they had stored in Google Drive, and it was only using 1.62 terabytes of their two terabytes by storage, and it turns out that they've been unable to use their Google Drive since February 14th because of this unstipulated issue that Google did not put in the terms of service, did not update anybody about, and simply just started enforcing out of nowhere, which it's not necessarily the fact that this exists. It makes sense that they have some sort of terms of service for their product. It's just the fact that they didn't communicate about it, did it retroactively slap people who were violating it, and made it so that they couldn't actually use something that they were paying for without any clear communication on what's going on. It's unknown if Google's ever gonna retroactively fix this or if you're just simply stuck with that limit. And Nvidia, not gonna fix GameStream, that's dead officially. As of March 31st, GameStream is dead. Nvidia has been replacing it with GeForce Now on whatever devices that were using it. GameStream was how you streamed video games from your desktop computer to Nvidia mobile devices, whether that was on an Nvidia Shield TV, Nvidia Shield tablet, or one of those Shield portables that I had way back in the day. That was a ton of fun. Now you have to use third-party software in case you wanna try that out. And in case you wanna try third-party GPUs, RTX 4070, well, we got a lot of details leaked slides coming out from NVIDIA talking about the RTX 4070's level of performance coming in at 29 teraflops, also having 300 OFAs, 400 tensor cores, which is a huge step up from the RTX 30 series, and an average gaming power of only 186 watts, which is significantly reduced from the 3070 Ti and the 3070 that it replaces, which is coming in at 215 watts. So it does look like NVIDIA is trying to sell the performance per watt model, However, likely I'm going to guess that even though the TGP on this graphics card is 200 watts, a lot of that savings is because of the DLSS 3 interpolated frames. It's using that upscaler technology rather than its brute force 29 teraflops performance. But it looks like for the same price as the 3070 Ti, you're getting more VRAM, you're getting more raw gaming performance, and then you're also getting the DLSS additions on top of that. But those OFAs are the optical flow accelerators that have been introduced in the RTX 40 series. That's supposed to make that DLSS 3 run super smoothly. Again, not a ton of games really implementing it, but it is there for extra performance. And that 29 teraflops puts the 4070 right around the 3080's 29.7 teraflops. You're getting two gigabytes more than the original 3080, which only had 10 gigabytes of VRAM. There was an addition of the 3080 that had 12 gigabytes, so they're gonna be roughly equal. And again, we're expecting to get this for 599 because video cards confirm that, and they're not backing down on that price, at least according to their sources. And it turns out that it's already going in stock at some retailers where you're able to pick it up, nowhere in the United States, but it does appear like it's being hosted 
and we have a lot of details coming out from EEC filings from SI. There's going to be a ton of RTX 4070s, gain word having them, Gigabyte, Palette, PNY, all of the usual suspects when it comes to the RTX 4070 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Likely to launch on April 13th, which is just about a week away. We're getting very close to it. According to reports, we're expecting the embargo for reviews to lift on the 12th, so we're not going to have a ton of time between the release and the purchase date for us to know what's going on, but that's when it's going to happen, likely according to everything we're hearing. Let me know, does this matter to you? RTX 3080 performance for 3070 Ti price. Is that exciting to you? With all the extra advancements that are coming with the 40 series, I want to hear from you down below in the comments, and I'm going to let you know that I'm done with this episode of Hot News. We'll be back for more of the hottest tech news out on the internet tomorrow, my friends.